What up, Reader Fam? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today, I'm bringing you another video in my Books I've Read Not So Recently series, the series on my channel where I share with you some books I've read not so recently because I'm a slacker. Slackity slack slack slacker. I've got five books that I'm going to share with you today. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, that's incorrect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. You'll see why it's seven in a minute. We've got some new favorites. We've got a new book that I didn't like. Uh-oh. Always hate when that happens, but it's got to happen every now and then. You know, gotta balance out the book flow, gotta humble you a little bit, gotta make sure that you're appreciating the books that you do love. So without further ado, let's get started. First up here we have The Miracles of the Namiya General Store. This is a translated work of fiction. It was originally written in Japanese and translated to English. The book starts off following three troubled boys who are doing everything they can to not get caught by the cops in the night. And they end up finding themselves at an abandoned general store called the Namiya General Store. While they're there, a letter gets slipped through the door. Slip slip. The letter is requesting advice for a situation that the sender is in. And when they send a reply, they almost instantly get a new piece of mail from the sender. Quick replies are the superior kind of replies. They begin to realize that they're corresponding with people from the past with their letters. And their replies will have a big impact on the futures of the senders. So we follow these boys this one night as they send letters back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, back and back and back and forth. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. And that's my review. Read it and fall in love. Whoa, psych! I did love it, but I am going to share why. I'm going to hand over my receipts. The first reason that I loved it was for the weaving storylines. You know I'm a sucker for storylines that weave together. I'm all about it. I'm trash for it. We've got this story storyline that connects with this storyline that connects with this storyline that connects to my heart and keeps it beaten. It's a heart fueler for me. It keeps that heart going ba bum ba bum ba bum. The story is already magical in some aspects, but that just really took it to a whole another level in terms of the magical feeling. The story is also really rich in history in terms of the people that we get to know, and also how it dives into the history of the Namiya General Store. We get to see why these mysterious letters are arriving at the General Store asking for advice. Because there is a reason for it. It's not just like, it's just happening and that's all you need to know. No, we get to see the why. And then, again, kind of like I mentioned, the magical element is kind of what really sold me on it. It's not no dragons and unicorns kind of magic, but it's a time element that comes into play where the letters that they are receiving are coming from the past. And that correspondence between the future and the past is what got me. I was already falling for the book and then I completely fell in love. I was pushed over the line into the love department. The one thing that was missing for me was kind of character depth when it came to our main characters. We get to see a lot of character depth with the people that we meet through the letters, but I wanted to get to know our main characters just a little bit more. But overall, it was a book that won over my heart, and one that I'll be pushing for y'all to read for years to come. Be prepared for lots of book pushing with this one. Who doesn't love a good book push? Next up, I'm going to talk about a trilogy that I read, even though I didn't read the books back to back necessarily. I just finished it as a whole recently, and I wanted to talk about it all together. But that is the Embassy Row trilogy. It consists of book one, All Fall Down, book two, See How They Run, and book three, Take the Key and Lock Her Up. I've had these books on my shelves for a long time, and I finally randomly one day decided to pick them up and read them. And that I did. In these books, we follow Grace, who lives on Embassy Row. Her grandfather is a powerful ambassador, and we see Grace get into all kinds of trouble with her new friends. And the main focus in book one, at least, is Grace trying to figure out who killed her mother. She'll do anything she can to find out the truth, as she should, but when the truth lands in her lap, it comes with a shock and leads to full-on devastation. And I don't say that lightly. I mean devastation to the max. <laughs> there were definitely elements of these that I enjoyed, otherwise I wouldn't have stuck with it for three whole books. Shoot, I would have ditched it by book one. But overall, it was just kind of an okay trilogy for me. Like, it was entertaining, but not much more. The thing is, for me, a book doesn't have to be this big, grand thing for me to enjoy it. Not every book's gotta blow me away, or push me off a cliff, or dangle me over a body of water with crocodiles in it. No. Some books can be chill and enjoyable, and that's all I need. In terms of things that I did like about it, I really enjoyed the found family aspect of it. We follow our main character, Grace, who is kind of really in need of friends, and we follow her as she navigates making new friends, and that can end up being a really difficult thing. We've all been there. We know how it is. She ends up falling in sync with this great group of friends who end up being her ride or dies, and she ends up relying on them a lot throughout the trilogy. And when I say a lot... I mean a lot. You'd think they were her bodyguards. I also loved the shock factor that came with these books. I'm looking at you, book one, with your straight up wild plot twist ending. I had to set this one down and stare at the ceiling for a little bit at one point because of how shocked I was by a big reveal. I need to study how Ali Carter does her endings because they come out of nowhere and just full on surprise you like hello sneak attack. As for critiques, one of my biggest critiques is actually the overuse of a word throughout the whole trilogy, but mostly in book one, and that is the word crazy. It is used so much 
throughout the trilogy. Mostly in book one though, I feel like it's especially used so much and it's just a bit much. Like I'm really curious to know how many times it's used in the first book. If anybody has the ebook and can search the word crazy and see how many times it's used, I would appreciate that because I'm very curious. Because I know it's an absurd amount of times. Another big thing that I just felt kind of iffy about was just how unreal some of the situations were throughout these books. You really got to go in with some major suspension of disbelief to kind of fully sink yourself into the situation because I think otherwise you'll be pretty frustrated. Not too shabby of a trilogy, but not one that I can give a glowing recommendation. Next up, I read All the Things We Never Knew, which is kind of a hard one to explain without spoiling, but I will do my best here. It is a story that's definitely more so focused on character exploration, which is why it's kind of hard to explain what exactly is going on in this book. But we follow two characters. We've got Charlie and Rex. They're both involved in the basketball scene and they get caught up in a quick romance that makes their hearts go dribble dribble. They have an instant connection as they have so many things that connect them right off the bat or rather right off the court eh, through both basketball activities and school life. But as the story begins to progress, things begin to bubble up and reveal themselves causing complications in their relationship. I was not expecting to enjoy this one but I ended up really liking it and I refuse to look at the reviews for this book because I feel like it's one that could easily be misunderstood and I get why because yes the insta love that takes place is a bit obnoxious like boy and girl lock eyes and the next thing you know they're head over heels in love but and this is a big old but I would argue that this book is so much more than the romance it's so much more than the insta love that takes place if you left this book being like this sucks insta love is the worst I hate it and what about all the other things it explores huh what about that you can't minimize this book down to being one thing when it explores so many things. It's so much more than a love story. We have a male character who you would normally look at and be like, oh, he's a tough guy basketball star. Basketball star? Yes, correct. But he's also incredibly vulnerable and does not hide that side of him. He's a big ol' softy, which is so incredibly important to see in fiction because of toxic masculinity. And we need to start breaking down toxic masculinity. And how do we do that? By having more soft guy characters. Not every male character needs to be super heckin' buff, show no emotion, and that being a sign of his toughness because one that's boring as heck and two if we want to see any change we've got to start introducing more soft guy characters i'm talking more guys breaking down and crying i'm talking more guys being open about the way that they feel whoa i didn't know i was going to go on a rant clearly i'm just a little bit passionate about this just a little but it was so refreshing to see a character like rex just be super vulnerable and be open about the way that he feels we love to see it in this book household we also follow carly who has been dealt a hand in life that she's kind of unsure of but she's just kind of going with it going with the flow and she has these expectations put on her that she must be this one thing because she's good at this one thing. So she's kind of fully being boxed in, but she doesn't know if she wants that to be her future. And we follow her as she takes a step back and is kind of rediscovering what she wants out of life. And in a way, it's a reminder to just allow yourself to have those moments where you're figuring it out. Just because you're good at something, it doesn't mean that it has to be your whole future. You can be whatever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. Even if outsiders are like, bruh, why are you doing that? Stick to what you're good at. No, do what you want. Not to be all 2013 or whatever, but YOLO, you only live once. Lastly, it has a focus on broken families and we see that on both ends. And we see the characters do the best that they can to kind of mend that brokenness. And we see how being in that situation can just kind of affect you mentally throughout your days. And the reason that I felt like this book kind of really excelled at exploring all these topics is because it didn't outright feel like one of those books where it was going out of its way to kind of preach on all these topics. They were just kind of quietly worked into the book and explored in a way that felt natural. Next up, I read The Lonesome Bodybuilder, which is a collection of short stories. And again, this one is also translated from Japanese to English. To give you kind of an idea as to the stories that you'll find in here, we have a story about a woman who becomes involved in bodybuilding, which is kind of where the title comes from. And her husband does not take notice of this at all. He doesn't notice the shift in her lifestyle and how she's kind of bulking up. We follow a boy who discovers people flying with umbrellas. And another story follows a woman who gets married to this man who ends up evolving to look identical to her. There's a few other stories, but that about covers it. Some of the stories are planted in reality, while others bring a bit of a magical aspect to the table. I'm not sure how to truly put into words how I felt about this one, but I really didn't like it. And every time I think about it, I try to invalidate my feelings by being like, oh, well, maybe you just weren't smart enough for it to click. No, Jesse, it's okay not to like a book. You don't get to blame it on not being smart enough. I will say that it full force came with the weirdness, which I'm all about that 
that. Give me weird and I'll give you my attention. But I think for me, I just needed a bit more substance. Is that the word I'm looking for? I needed a bit more meaning in the stories. And maybe that's too much to expect out of a short story collection. Not to say that you can't get any meaning out of these stories. Like there's definitely things that you can uncover with each story. For example, one of the stories definitely explores the idea of lack of communication and attention within a relationship. But a lot of them for me kind of felt like the start of an idea. And there seemed to be a lack of completion when the story reached its end. In the end, this ended up being a book that's not for me, but I can definitely see why so many people are drawn to it. The last book that I'm going to be talking about today is You Should See Me in a Crown. This book follows our main character Liz, who is tired of her small town and is ready for college so she can get the heck out of there. But when a scholarship falls through, she's scrambling to try and make it work, which leads her to running for prom queen, as the winners of prom queen and king end up getting a scholarship. It's the last thing that Liz wants to participate in, but if it means freedom from this small town in the long run, it's a chance that she's willing to take. This is one of the best contemporaries I've read. I said what I said. And I've been binging contemporaries like wild this summer. Fantasy who? We don't know her. No, but really I need to get back to the fantasy genre. Somebody come and pull these contemporary books out of my hand and glue a fantasy book into my hands, please, yes. This was just so light and fun and just a full on tank of wholesomeness. We follow a girl in a small town with big city dreams. And I loved following her journey and just seeing how she made the most out of the situation. Obviously she's not super happy in this current situation, but she's not ever really a downer about it. Like she's like, okay, this is my situation and I'm gonna work with what I have. We have complicated romantic relationships and complicated friendships. And when I say complicated, I mean Avril Lavigne's kind of complicated. Like why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? I see the way you're acting like somebody else. It gets me frustrated. Okay, I'll stop quoting Avril now, we're done. I'm also just a sucker for underdog books where they just like come through swinging and just break down all the barriers before them and keep fighting. And that goes down in this one and it made me so happy to see unfold. Also, there were just so many creative scenes throughout the story. I feel like a lot of times there are contemporaries that can feel similar to other contemporary stories out there or just have similar elements that you've seen before or cliche things happen. Like a lot of them have scenes that you've seen over and over and over again. But this one had a lot of creative elements that were brought in that made it feel really fresh. If you're in need of a pick-me-up book, a book that will just make you happy, I highly recommend checking out You Should See Me in a Crown. All right, so those were seven books that I have read not so recently. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. I always love to hear your thoughts on the books that I've read as well, but if you haven't read any of these books, let me know down below in the comments a book that you've read recently that you either loved or hated. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye-o!